Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Kashif Kamran. Today I am discussing with you the importance of exhibits in the first question and what you should be knowing. Now, when you look at the first question in the AAA paper, which consists of 40 technical and 10 professional marks, uh, there are mostly four exhibits, but in some cases there are five. The first exhibit always is the partner email and the partner email contains the requirements, what you should be doing. So when you open the partner email, the partner email will tell you that you need to write a briefing note. And in that briefing note, you have to do A, B, C, D or sometime A, B, C, D, E. So that first exhibit is extremely important to know the requirements. Now, starting from the September 22 exams in the in the first exhibit, which is the partner email, the partner will also be telling you as a manager that on which factor the materiality for the audit should be decided. Now, the partner will be telling you that I would like the materiality to be based on profit. So that means you are calculating the materiality only on the basis of profit in the, in the answer. You will not be putting the materiality on the basis of revenue or total asset. Now, this is an update which has already been covered in my September 22 webinars. You can watch the day two of my September 22 webinar for this. Moreover, the exhibit two mostly consists of the background information of the client. And the background information of the client is extremely important to identify the risk whether the question is on business risk or audit risk or risk of material misstatement, most of the risk will be identified from the background information of the company. So the second exhibit is always very, very important to identify the issues. Now, if there is a requirement in the first question, which is about audit procedures, an examiner wants you to make certain audit procedures on uh, respective accounting areas, in the, se in the second exhibit, which is the background information, you might also find information about that particular area where the audit procedures has to be made. For example, the examiner asks you to recommend audit procedures on a share-based payment. So when you're reading the exhibit number two, which is the background information, you will come across a paragraph about share-based payment. So that paragraph would become extremely important, not just to identify the risk in the share-based payment, but also to think about what procedures will you be making on the information given about the share-based payment. So you need to be critical of the exhibit number two. The third exhibit in most cases is an exhibit which contains the extracts of the financial statement. So examiner will give you the extracts of the financial statement uh, which can be extremely important because you can investigate the risk from the financial statement. You can identify what is increasing, what is decreasing in the financial statement. You can identify the ratios in the financial statement. Uh, at times, the examiner has given the note numbers in the financial statement. For example, examiner must have given a note number for revenue or examiner must have given a note number for operating expense or examiner must have given a note number for other income. Then you have to read the note numbers as well because if the examiner is giving a note number for any item in the financial statement, that particular note number will reflect risk. And you need to identify what is the risk in the note number. So the extracts of the financial statement can be used for calculations, for materiality, can be used for ratio analysis, can be used for comparison over the current year versus the last year. And those Values can be used as part of your audit risk answer and further investigation of audit risk or risk of material misstatement can be possible from the exhibit number three, which is the extracts of the financial statement. Now, the other exhibits, four and five. Most of the time, if the question consists of four exhibits, the fourth exhibit, the last one, will contain a specific situation and for that specific situation, examiner will give you a specific requirement in the email of the partner in the first exhibit. For example, uh, in the September 22 mock exam, if I just show you that on the screen, exam, exam do refer to a specific exhibit, which mostly is the last one, either the exhibit four or five. 
either the four or five in the context of a specific requirement, which could be worth six to eight marks. For example, uh, in the mock exam for September 22, which is on the breakfast platform, there was an exhibit four, which was about the climate risk facing the company. An examiner had an eight marks requirement, I guess, asking for discussion on climate risk and how climate risk would affect the planning and performance of the audit. Now, examiner was saying in the requirement, using the information provided in the exhibit four, so that was a certain requirement coming out of the exhibit four. So you need to attack the exhibit four for dealing with a certain requirement in the partner email. In the March, June 22 exam, the last exhibit was fifth. Examiner did give some weaknesses in the client acceptance process. And the examiner has given us a checklist of the client acceptance process in the exhibit number five of the March, June 22 exam and asking us to identify the weaknesses uh, in the client acceptance process undertaken by the audit firm. So that was very specific. Examiner was saying, using the information given in exhibit five comma, evaluate the weaknesses in the client acceptance process. In the September, December 21 exams, ex there was the last exhibit was the exhibit four. And in the exhibit four, there was some uh, information about social and environmental reporting and data analytics. An examiner liked you to address uh, that whether the audit firm should give advice on social and environmental reporting, what are ethical and professional issues arising out of the advice on social and environmental reporting, and what are generally the benefits of data analytics to the auditor. Now, that is proving again and again that mostly the last exhibit of your first question contains some specific information. If you look at the mock exam, the March, June 22 exam, the September, December 21 exam, and even in the March, June 21 exam, there was an exhibit five about ethical issues. An examiner in the first exhibit, which is a partner email, would give you a requirement number D or E telling you using the exhibit four or using the exhibit five, do this. So there is a certain exhibit, a specific exhibit in the number of exhibits given in the question number one for which there is a specific requirement. So please be sure of that. And if you have practiced plenty of past papers, you must have seen this on a regular basis. So the last exhibit is extremely important because there could be a dedicated requirement worth six to eight marks on that. Now, finally, when you are dealing with audit risk or risk of material misstatements in the first question, uh, examiner can tell you using all exhibits, evaluate the audit risk. Now, if the examiner says using all exhibits, evaluate the audit risk, that means audit risk is possible in all the exhibits, one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four. So you have to find audit risk from all the exhibits. But at times the examiner says, Using the exhibit one, two, three, evaluate the audit risk. Now that means audit risk is only available in exhibit one, two, three, not in four, not in five. So you will only be finding the audit risk from the first three exhibits, not from four, not from five. So you have to be very watchful of what the examiner is saying, whether using all exhibits or using certain exhibits. There are certain requirements in the question number one, which, which starts with, using the exhibit four, using the exhibit five. So then you have to go to that certain exhibit to write your answer. The last thing, when you are looking at the number of exhibits in the first, uh, in, in the first question, and you look at the partner email, which is the exhibit number one, the partner will be telling you in the email not to do this. Most of the time when you're reading the requirements A, B, C, D, there is a note given under the requirement and the examiner tells you in that note number, you should not do this. Please don't do that because if the examiner is saying you should not do this, so ignore that. But if examiner is telling you, you should not do this and still you are doing it, that is not demonstrating your professionalism and you will be losing the communication skill marks allocated in the question number one, because if you are communicating something which is not required, you're not demonstrating the communication skill. So please ensure you read the, the first exhibit carefully because the first exhibit will tell you what you have to do. The first exhibit will also tell you what you should not do. And the first exhibit will tell you 
which exhibits you should be using for writing an audit risk answer, whether all of them or few of them. And what about particular exhibits like exhibit four and exhibit five and what you should be doing with them in exam paper. So please carefully read the number of exhibits, carefully read the requirements of the question in the first exhibit, which is a partner email. And that is much needed. I hope you will like and benefit from this video, understanding the exhibits in the question number one of the AAA paper. This is your tutor, Kashif Kamran, signing off. Take care. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.